What's up, Sean? Hey, hey. Hey, Brian. Nice to see you. Good. You good? You look a little like Biden here, aren't you? Yeah, I don't normally wear shades, but I felt like we were at, a, at the beach. We got to put the shades on. You need the Maybe. I also can't see without my eyeglasses, so okay. they're coming off as we speak. You and I had probably the easiest commutes of uh, our like colleagues here today, right? Like a dream. You ready? This going to be you, you, all then come back up and introduce Tom all the time. Tom, you'll be here for questions, but you're not going to. Nothing yet, so. Are we preventing you from coming up here from uh, okay. Are we preventing people from coming up? I hope not. No, no, no. There's another wall like that. Okay. okay. Be really nice to people. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Island Beach State Park, which, by the way, I believe now two years ago was rated as America's number one state park. And you can see why. It is an incredibly beautiful day here at the Jersey Shore, one of just many I hope we see over the coming months. I know we'll see a bunch more this week. I'm joined to my left by the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, Sean LaTourette. Great to have you, Sean. Uh, and then to my right, Tom Cosentino, another dear friend, executive director of the Garden State Wine Growers Association. I'm also honored uh, to be joined by the superintendent, the guy who needs no introduction of the state police, Colonel Pat Callahan. There appear to be some weights if we want to lift afterward here, Pat. I'm not sure why they're there. Hey, before we jump into why we're here, just a reminder that today is May 19th. Uh, and we signaled a couple of weeks ago that... Uh, a big piece of our continued opening of the state uh, is happening today. So just to remind folks, indoor gathering limits up to 50, outdoor gathering limits removed, indoor capacities eliminated, eliminated rather we still have the six foot rule in place, but no capacities on restaurants, indoor businesses, etc. For catered events, you can now have up to 250 people. If it's a fixed seat, indoor venue you can have up to 30 percent of capacity and as of today interstate youth sports competitions are back on the books so in a little bit more than a week we will be welcoming the unofficial start of another jersey summer and to make sure that we're able to have a healthy and successful season in every community our operation jersey summer is in full swing to make sure we get as many new jerseyans ages 12 and up vaccinated against COVID. And today I am proud to announce a few new reasons to get out and get vaccinated. First, thanks to the partnership with Tom and his colleagues at the Garden State Wine Growers Association, nine wineries have stepped up and stepped forward to be the first participants in what we're calling Uncork the Vaccination. Very similar to our shot and a beer campaign, Uncork the Vaccination will put our world-class wineries in the spotlight. Through this program, any New Jerseyan aged 21 and over who receives their first shot in the month of May can visit a tasting room at the following participating wineries to receive a free glass of one of their wines. So let me just read off the nine wineries, if I may. Amalthea Cellars in Atco, my, my dear friend Lou Caracciola. Auburn Road Vineyards in Piles Grove. Bellevue Winery in Landisville. De Matteo Vineyards in Hamilton. Salem Oak Vineyards in Pedrick Town. Terhune Orchards in Princeton. Tomasello Winery also in Hamilton. And a special note here that folks have to actually visit that winery itself and not one of Tomasella's satellite tasting rooms. Villa Milagro Vineyards in Pohatcong and the White Horse Winery also in Hamilton, White Horse Winery in Hamilton. As Tom knows, Tammy and I have had the honor to host many of these wineries at Drumthwacket for the Governor's Cup wine competition. New Jersey's wineries are putting out award-winning excellent wines. In fact, we only serve Jersey wine and beer, by the way, at uh, Drumthwacken. So folks, go out and get your shot in May, then head out to one of these great 
part participating wineries, take a walk through the vineyards, and enjoy some of the best that Jersey has to offer. And again, I thank Tom and the Garden State Wine Growers Association for their partnership and support. And of course, I thank each of the participating wineries. Check out the details. Tom, I think it's at NewJerseyWines.com. Does that sound right? NewJerseyWines.com. Uh, I mentioned Drum Thwacket for the competitions. Speaking of Drum Thwacket, I'm also proud to announce our second event today. First Lady Tammy Murphy and I are putting our own skin in the game. Every New Jerseyan who gets their first shot before the end of May, and in this case, it includes everyone who has already been vaccinated over the past five plus months, as well as those folks getting vaccinated over the course of the next few weeks or two weeks, is eligible to win a private dinner with the two of us, either at historic Drumthwacket, the official governor's residence in Princeton, or at the governor's shore home a couple of miles north of here, right here at Island Beach State Park. In either location, this will include a private tour of the house and the grounds, along with dinner. To enter, please visit our main website, covid19.nj.gov, in this case, slash dinner, covid19.nj.gov slash dinner. And Tammy and I look forward to hosting you and a guest for dinner. And now for the big one, although those two are pretty big, particularly the one with the wineries and the reason why we're actually here at Island Beach State Park. No Jersey summer would be complete without a trip to either the shore or to one of our beautiful state parks. And for this, Sean and his team at the DEP are stepping up in a big way. We're calling this one Vax and Visit. For every New Jerseyan who has at least their first shot by July 4th, is, that, is eligible to receive a free season state parks vax pass good for entrance at any one of our state parks for the rest of the 2021 season from Memorial Day weekend through the end of this calendar year. And yes, that includes right here at Island Beach State Park, in addition to all the other 18 state parks which have parking or entrance fees. A season pass would normally cost you $50, but the State Parks Vax Pass is free for doing the right thing and getting vaccinated to help us end this pandemic. Here's how it works, and Sean will give you more detail. Starting next Thursday, May 27th, go to nj.gov slash vax and visit. Again, nj.gov slash vax and visit to register for your State Parks Vax Pass, and you will receive an email with your Vax Pass. Then simply go to any State Park and show your Vax Pass, your ID, and your vaccination card. You could visit as often as you like. And again, I know Sean will have more details. So for all of you who have already stepped up and raised your sleeve and gotten your vaccinations, this means you can usher in Memorial Day weekend with a free trip to one of our state parks once you've completed the online registration. And importantly, for those of you who have either just started your vaccination process now or haven't yet gotten your first dose, here's our invitation. Visit one of our more than 1,700 vaccination sites and complete the process of getting yourself and your loved ones vaccinated and protected against COVID. Then get your state park Vax Pass and enjoy a day here at Island Beach State Park or at any one of our 50 other state parks, forests, or recreation areas as many times as you want on us. And by the way, if you've already purchased a season pass, don't worry, we've got you two covered and you can apply to have the cost of your pass reimbursed. Again, I'll ask Sean to give more details in a few moments, but again, I thank him and the great team at DEP for this great idea and a particular shout out to the folks at the Division of Parks and Forestry, some of whom are with us today. Again, nj.gov slash vax and visit beginning next Thursday, May 27. 
Now let's take, before we hear from Sean and Tom, let's take a quick run through the latest numbers. We are reporting a total of 3,935,694 full vaccinations. Sean, that's potentially a lot of free passes, but each one is richly deserved. Again, 3,935,694 completely vaccinated New Jerseyans. Looking to the case count, we are today adding 626 new positive PCR and presumed positive antigen test results. The positivity rate for all PCR tests recorded on Saturday, remember on, on weekends our positivity rates have been consistently higher. This is a little bit higher, but not much higher, 3.86%. And the statewide rate of transmission is down a bit to 0 0.5. Just what we want it. In our hospitals, as of last night's report, there were 782 total patients being treated. That's the first time under 800 in a long time. There were 168 patients in our ICUs and 110 of them requiring a ventilator. Throughout yesterday, 97 live patients were discharged from our hospitals while 74 new COVID positive patients were admitted and there were 15 reported in hospital deaths each of which remain under investigation, not yet confirmed. However, with the heaviest of hearts, we are reporting an additional 21 confirmed COVID-related deaths today. And given it's a Wednesday, we've revised the number of probable deaths to 2,660. We will get back to memorializing some of the brothers and sisters who we have lost at our press conference on Monday. The major metrics show that clearly we have this virus on the run. But those last numbers, the numbers of those who just entered our hospitals or who have passed away, are stark reminders that while we have COVID on the run, the fight is not yet over. So please go out and get vaccinated. Today we've given you three more reasons to step up and be a part of the statewide army that is chasing this virus down and making COVID history. And speaking of that, our Operation Jersey Summer Outreach Teams, the so-called COVID-19 Community Corps, have begun hitting the streets and cities across the state. They will be going door to door in areas where we need more folks to get vaccinated, to get facts out into the community, and to talk directly with residents about the importance of their being vaccinated. And by the way, as of literally today, that team has bulked up considerably, now both volunteered and paid staff. If a member of the COVID-19 Community Corps knocks on your door, please take a minute to speak with them. Community Corps members will all be wearing clear identification badges and blue safety vests and will follow all health and safety protocols. Uh, our team, by the way, is multilingual, importantly. All responses to questions are confidential and will be invaluable in helping us get vital resources to your community so we can end this pandemic and get on with our recovery together. And when you do go out to get vaccinated, your vaccination card can be your ticket to a free glass of wine at one of our great wineries. Or perhaps dinner with the First Lady and me at Drum Thwacket or here at Island Beach State Park. Or for a summer of free visits to Island Beach State Park and the 50 state parks elsewhere in the great state of New Jersey. We are pulling out all the stops to make this the best summer ever in New Jersey. With that, please help me welcome the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, Sean LaTourette. Sean. So uh, thank you, Governor. I'm a little, I'm just a little shorter than you. Um, <laughs> adjust that if you don't mind. Um, so I don't know that I have much more details to give because uh, he covered a lot. Um, but here's the thing. We've got this virus on the run, so Let's get everybody into our parks to go for a run, to connect with each other, right? Again, after a year of being too disconnected, I mean, who doesn't love a park, right? I mean, parks are a great place to connect with each other and with nature. They improve our physical health and our mental health. And what I love most about a park is that parks are for everyone. No matter who you are or where you come from, how much money you make, what you look like or who you love, it is a space for you. 
And so the team at the Department of Environmental Protection and the Division of Parks and Forestry in particular are so excited that we get to build on what we saw last year when our parks and our open spaces were one of the few places to get a respite from the hell that we've all been through together. We saw first time visitorship at our parks and we want everyone to come back. I mean, look at this place. It's amazing. And on your way here, let's do what we've all been so good at in beating back this virus. Let's take good care of ourselves and each other. Get vaccinated. Take care of your neighbors. Remind them. Tell them to go to nj.gov slash vax and visit so they can go to the park too. And whether you're north or south, right, from, from the forests of, of High Point and Worthington down to the urban greenscapes of the Great Falls in Patterson to here, Island Beach State Park, down to Wharton and the Pinelands or all the way down to Cape May Point, there is so much to see and come to love and enjoy. So get out there. If you've already purchased a, a annual pass, we will make sure that you get reimbursed. Uh, next week, as everybody runs out this week to get those vaccines to sign up on Thursday uh, before Memorial Day weekend, you'll log on to nj.gov slash visit and you'll be able to sign up for the pass. You'll have it right there on your phone or print out a copy. Just show it at the entrance station along with your ID and your Vax card. It's that easy. If you don't have access to the internet, we've got you covered. Someone at our gatehouses will help you get the pass too. Because we are all in this together, just as we have been thus far and, and, and will be until this thing is gone. So I want to just give, in closing, a special thanks to uh, our Assistant Commissioner for Natural and Historic Ray Resources, Ray Bukowski, our new Director of Parks and Forestry, John Cecil, who we recently stole from New Jersey Audubon, and I'm not sorry. And uh, to here at Island Beach State Park, uh, our Superintendent, uh, Jen Clayton, uh, who knows what it's like to, to manage the crowds we get. And we will move people through and, and get folks admitted as quickly as we can. We'll get real-time updates on our parks web pages uh, as, uh, as our team uh, has done historically to make sure folks know uh, how full a park is. Uh, and always check those uh, before you leave so uh, you're not uh, too disappointed sometimes uh, by waits that can occur. And, and we'll try to address those uh, very, very quickly. Uh, but the, the quickest way to, to do that is make sure you're getting your pass uh, next Thursday at nj.gov slash visit. Thank you so much. And thank you to, to Governor Murphy for making this all possible. Sean, thank you, man. I mentioned 50 other. There are 51 state parks, including Island Beach. 18 or 19 require admission. 18. 18, 18. require admission. So that's in case you're wondering about those different numbers, 18 require either an entrance fee or, or some other form of admission. The balance are free of charge, so it's directed in particular to ones that normally would require a fee. I mentioned Tom Costantino uh, in my remarks. He's been a friend since we've gotten here in office. We've done a lot with his organization. He's the executive director of the Garden State Wine Growers Association, and he, he and his nine-member uh, wineries are stepping up in a big way. Tom Costantino, come on down. Thank you, Governor. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor, actually to uh, have the Garden State Wine Growers Association be involved in promoting the vaccinations. You know, it's been a trying year for everyone, and including our wineries. You know, last March, when everything closed down, um, our wineries were in the midst of pruning the vines, getting everything ready, vineyard managers. And then all of a sudden, wineries had to adapt. We were deemed to be an essential business, so our wineries learned how to set up uh, curbside sales and takeout sales and they also did direct shipping to stay alive and come June we wrote a plan and we got everybody prepared to reopen June 15th and our wineries became one of the greatest alternatives for people to find entertainment because we were the only guys open 
and our wineries operate in a safe manner, setting things up, social distance, and they thrived over the summer months, and including bringing in hundreds of new patrons to each winery that discovered that New Jersey has over 50 wineries because they were looking for things to do and realized the great experiences that could be had at our wineries. So now, as we go into Memorial Day weekend, in fact, next weekend there's the first wine festival of the year, the Pour Into Summer Wine Festival down in Wildwood. We were the only state in the country to do wine festivals that last year. We did four of them in October because we basically set up the rules and guidelines to operate safely, and we've continued to do that in all our wineries. So we're looking forward to getting everyone back out over the summer in a safe manner at our wineries, but we want you to get vaccinated, and that's why I'm proud that nine of our member wineries have stepped up to join the fight to educate the public, to give them, give them the tools to get vaccinated, and to come out and enjoy the 50-plus wineries that are now open in New Jersey and enjoy our award-winning wines. Thank you, Governor, and I look forward to one day now in the fall being back for the Governor's Cup. You betcha. Look forward to it. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Tom, thank you. And, and by the way, if you're not an aficionado of New Jersey wines, as we have become over the past several years, um, they consistently win blind taste tests against what you would think of as other of the, of the big guys, like in California or France or Italy, just consistently uh, outstanding wines at great value. Um, and I'll bet you, Tom, without knowing, I'll bet you the number of participants in this program, I'll bet you it goes up. Uh, we saw that with our fine breweries. Again, we've got some of the best craft breweries in America. That number has gone up in terms of the participating um, breweries. And I'll bet you the same thing happens here with the wineries, because this is one plus one equals three. It's good for everybody. Pat, I, you're, you're with us, but I think it's fair to say no, no, no compliance reports. And, and the, you're doing a great job on the weather this week, so thank you for that. Enough said. I don't want to jinx that. Um, we'll take a few questions. Before we do, um, we'll be uh, out and about the next couple of days, either virtually or li literally, as, as well as over the weekend. And we'll be back um, at the War Memorial Monday at 1 o'clock. And my guess is we're going to continue to have news, uh, whether it's more elements of Operation Jersey Summer or more steps that we're going to take to continue to open the state up. Today is a big step in that direction. Uh, I've been saying since December, I'm hanging my hat on Memorial Day, so watch that space. With that, any questions? Brian. Uh, Governor, you don't have your pen and paper to write this down, so I'm going to test your memory now. Uh, we also have no microphone. Is that right today? So, uh, Hi, folks. You, no mic, right? No, no portable mic. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the question, Brian, which will make it even more challenging. Last week you said weeks on lifting the indoor mask mandate. Are you still going with weeks, or would you use a singular week? No, new, no news today on this. Um, so the question is, the indoor mask mandate, is it a matter of weeks or, or not? Um, again, we consulted. We just didn't put our finger in the air. We consulted medical experts, made this decision particularly given our density and our experience with this, um, with this pandemic. Any amount of time on the clock allows us to, two things. Number one, if people keep their guard up, that allows us to continue to drive the numbers into the ground. And you can see them again today, they're going down and they're going down at a steep rate. So even if it's only a matter of days, every single day counts. And uh, per the reason we're here today, with every day, and we're trying to put rocket fuel into that, the number of folks getting vaccinated is going in the other direction, up, up, up. Um, so I got no news on that per se. We are opening this place up. There's no question about it. And we will open it up fully. We'll do it responsibly, safely, and as soon as we think we can. That, Please. How many more arms do you need to, to really feel that this state is as vaccinated as it can realistically I think I'll stick with where our objective has been, 4.7 million adults by the end of June, fully vaccinated. It's going to be a challenge. There's no question about it. So programs like this, we're not just sort of dreaming up for no good reason. We need to, we need to uh, get, get the, the Operation Jersey summer as full bore as we possibly can. We're now just about, Dan, at 4 million, uh, just under, just, just about, I suspect we'll cross 4 million by tomorrow. I think we're going to cross 70 percent uh, first shots in the next day or two of adults, not including the 12 to 15 cohort. Um, 
but I believe that's what it's going to take. And, and, and Operation Jersey Summer has a bunch of different elements. I mentioned the community core, just to spend 30 seconds on that. They're focused on, we can get to the communities. They're focused especially on communities where the vaccine, vaccination rate is under, uh, under punching. Um, and they are, not entirely, but virtually entirely communities of color where we know we've got equity issues, where we've got, to, we've got to get bring the vaccine to the people as opposed to sitting back and expecting that people will come to the vaccine. So it's a whole variety of different elements getting vectoring into different parts of our pop population. Sir, how are you? Uh, speaking of beaches, um, we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up shortly. Uh, the Borough of Deal has introduced an ordinance that would reserve parking on weekends on all the streets closest to the beaches for residents only. They will be issuing placards to residents, and people who do not live in Deal will have to park west of Ocean Avenue, which if you're familiar with that, is yep. pretty heavily traffic street. Um, does that violate the public trust doctrine, in your opinion, and will you be taking any action for it? I don't give any. And, yeah, come on, Sean. I, I'll let Sean step up and, uh, and address that. Sure. So we're looking at it really hard, right? So just just to be clear, I know that folks may sometimes suffer the, the misimpression that DEP runs all the beaches. We we have the, the pleasure of running this one, not all of them. Um, but the, the, the state um, and DEP have a role in ensuring uh, that folks comply uh, with the public trust doctrine. And uh, we have been in communication with the borough, uh, looking at what it is that, that they're doing, uh, and in particular examining uh, whether it is uh, appropriate in the face of uh, agreements that, are ha that, that exist relative to, to beach access. So we're not prepared to give you an, an answer as to whether there are uh, violations or not. We certainly want to make sure that public access is afforded uh, in all cases. So it's under review right now, and as soon as we come to a, a landing place on that, we can make sure you know. I anticipate that we will be in touch with them, yes. I, I don't have specific the level of insight into deal that Sean and his team have. I would say as a general matter, the spirit, particularly this year, when everyone is desperate and dying, in some cases literally, to get out and enjoy outdoor weather and our extraordinary shore, I land conceptually very much on the side. Let's make sure everyone has access to that. Dave, I barely recognize you without your mask, man. I assume that's why you came today. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, I, I think implied in your question is that dinner with Tammy and me does not have the same cachet as a million dollars, it sounds like, is the, is the premise. I would, I, I'd repeat what I said a, couple, a, couple, a week or two ago, which is everything remains on the table. Um, and we've looked at, it, it, I think, every program that other states, and in many cases quite creatively, have put forward. So I'd say that, can, that, that review continues, and we're not saying no to anything yet. The clock is ticking, so in fairness... We got to, you know, if June 30th is our deadline, it's not like we're going to stop doing this on June 30th, but we've got a goal to reach by then. Uh, t you know, today's May 19th, so the clock is definitely ticking. A lot of states have done some interesting stuff. A lot of states look to us and like what we've done. And I think given, given our summer reality and given the extraordinary state parks as an example, uh, this one feels really good to us. Uh, knocking on people's door feels really good to us. Getting them a glass of wine or a, or a bottle of beer feels really good to us. Those mobile units, the, the Grateful for the Shot program that the Pandemic Relief Fund has pioneered. So we'll stay at it. I, 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 a typical night for me would be a glass of Chardonnay, probably followed by, I think I'm going to lean Cabernet on the red, uh, Tom. I hope that's all right. And I hope I don't upset any of our 
Merlot or Pinot Noir. It's it's <laughs> exactly, as long as it's Jersey. Brent, how are you? Yeah, I don't blame parents, and my guess is that's not for, uh, forever and always either. Uh, I believe, and Dan Bryan will, will follow up with you, I believe it's following the CDC guidance on that piece. Um, so we're, we're, if you will, again, consulting medical experts and in the process of opening this place up wide, hopefully sooner than later, safely and responsibly, we still think indoor masks uh, make sense for a at least a little bit longer. Uh, but I think beyond that, it's following the CDC guidance. I don't have any insights for you. But again, most importantly, none of this is forever and always. We want to get out of this. I want to get out of this as much as folks do. I want to thank Tom Costantino and Tom to you and the, the Wine Growers Association for everything you do. Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan, Commissioner Sean LaTourette. What a day to be on the Jersey Shore and in particular at this American Gem Island Beach State Park. Uh, you got one. I didn't see you. I apologize. Nothing personal. One more. Tell Brenda I'm a big fan of hers. I, I continue to be, but she's given her questions to everybody and not showing up here. So I just want to make that point for the record. Uh, listen, I'm with them. When I was speaking to the administration before they made their decision on the mask rule, I made the point the six foot down to three foot even is a game changer. I was on with uh, some CEOs of some of our, our state's biggest companies today with, with having a similar conversation. I believe it's a question of when and not if. Um, I would prefer in this case that the feds make the move because you pick a uh, not a restaurant so much as a corporation that's got people in a bunch of different states. That makes it hard on them um, to have a different reality in Jersey than you might, they might have in another state they operate in. So I hope sooner than later, and I hope the feds take that first step. Apologize for not seeing you early on. Again, Sean, Tom, and Pat, thank you all. Folks, visit our state, get vaccinated, visit our state parks, our wineries. Tammy and I are looking forward to having dinner with a couple of folks out there. Thanks all for coming out. Here's to a great summer in Jersey on the shore in the entire state. Thank you all.